for more about compound interest with Mr. Bywater. Yay! Oh, wait, this is Mr. Bywater. Mr. Bywater, what happened to your voice? More importantly, Mr. Bywater, why are you calling yourself Mr. Bywater? That's kind of weird. Oh, well, here we go. I'm just kidding. I'm not going to do that the whole video. That would drive me nuts. I can't imagine you poor children having to listen to it at home. All right, we're going to go straight into compound interest here. We were introduced to it in the previous video, but now we want to talk a little bit more about something more realistic because uh, very often when you have compound interest, it's not actually compounded yearly. Okay. Sometimes it's compounded half yearly, sometimes it's quarterly, sometimes it's monthly. In fact, there are situations where interest is compounded daily or even something called continuously. Now, let me give you some background as to what this is. Some of you may have heard of this before and may be comfortable with it, and some of you may have no idea what I'm talking about. Okay, so you remember when we talked about compound interest in the previous video that what we were talking about that each year at the end of the year we got interest, but we got interest not just on the principal amount, the original amount, but also we gained interest on anything that had been added in since then, right? Now, uh, sometimes banks do what is called, they, they do something where it's compounding more often than once a year, okay? So let's say that if I had a yearly compounding, okay, that let's, let's just go with our 5% again because five is a, a nice number. Um, so we have a yearly compounding of 5%. That means one time at the end of the year, we're going to add 5% of whatever's in the bank. Okay, now let's look at half yearly. So half yearly means that two times during the year we're gonna get interest, okay? Now they may still say that it is a 5% per annum, but then they would say compounded half yearly. Okay, so what that means is that Half yearly means it's going to happen twice. Now, but you don't get 5% twice because that's 5% per year. So what they do is they take that 5% and they divide it into two pieces, right? So if I divide 5% by 2, then I get 2.5. So I would get 2.5% once and then at halfway through the year. And then I would get another 2.5% at the end of the year. Now, some of you may say, yeah, but isn't that the same? 2.5% and 2.5%, doesn't that add up to five? Well, the answer is no, because this is compounding. So when you get this 2.5 right here, you're gonna have some interest. So you're actually gonna have a little bit more money than you would have otherwise. So when you get this 2.5, it's not just 2.5 on the original amount, it's on the original amount plus the extra 2.5% you got here. And so you are actually getting a little bit more by compounding half yearly. Now, quarterly, monthly, daily, those are all basically the same thing, right? They'll still say that it's 5% per annum. But if it's quarterly, then you're going to do 5 divided by 4 quarters, 5 divided by 4, which will be 1.25%. Uh, so we'll go plus 1.25% and then that will happen each quarter. So again, you're getting interest on the interest and interest on the interest of the interest and interest on the interest of the interest of the interest and uh, probably another time as well, but uh, I lost track somewhere in there, okay? But we have four different times then when we get these interests. Now, not to worry, this actually doesn't end up being too bad because we're gonna use basically the same formula it's just going to change just a little bit. If you want a proof of this, there's lots of them online. You can probably find one on YouTube or, or maybe even, even in a textbook or something. I, I don't think at this point that it's worth going through the proof of this. But the formula will look very, very similar to what we did in the last vi video. It's the future value equals the present value times 1 plus, our, wow, this looks a lot, re really familiar, 100 times k and then n times k here. Now, what this does, 
what is k? Well, k is the number of compounds yearly. Okay, so if I were doing, for example, quarterly, then for quarterly, k would equal four because there would be four compounds a year. Now what this does, notice that I put the k on the bottom here, which means that r is being divided by k. That's what we did here, right? We divided r, that percentage rate, into how many to make sure that it's still added up to a total of five. But then, instead of doing it this many years, that number of years needs to be multiplied by four because I'm doing it four times every year. And so by multiplying the years times that, I now get four times as many compoundings with that smaller percentage, okay? This then is going to allow me to add up to the final thing. Uh, if I have monthly, then K equals 12. Half yearly, K equals two, right? How many times are you gonna do it in a year? Yearly, K equals one. So this goes back to that previous video, right? Where I was talking about the other formula, which was F V equals P V times one plus R over a hundred times, uh, sorry, to the N power. I said this was kind of in your formula packet, but not exactly. Well, the one up above, the one in the yellow circle, that one is in your formula packet. Okay, they don't define the variables. You got to know what the variables are, but that formula is in your formula packet. So if you know that if it's just simple compounding yearly, that k is one, then you have the right equation, right? If k is one, that would take this away and it would take that away, giving you the original, right? Um, so yeah, basically you have this formula. It's just in a slightly different format there. Okay, uh, daily you can do daily k equals 365, right? 365 times a year and it would work. Um, continuously is a little bit weird. You actually don't have to worry about that at this point. HLs, I believe that at some point you're going to get to look into this a little bit more, but uh, right this instant in this video, we're not gonna talk about that. This is just the general for the core, okay? So uh, why don't we move on to the next slide and see how we can use this? If we're gonna do it, we want to or not. Here we go, we got Brendan now. Brendan invests his last paycheck, 5,000 RMB. Wow, nice job, Brendan. In a bank with 2.5% interest, compounded annually for five years. After that, he's able to move the money into an account compounding monthly, still at 2.5% annual, for three more years. How much will he have after the full eight years? All right, well, let's have a look, Brendan. Let's see if we can help you out and figure out how much money you're gonna have. All right, so these are both using compounding, right? So both of these are gonna be using that future value equals present value times one plus R over 100K to the NK power. Okay, that formula, remember, is in your formula packet, so you've got access to it, okay? Um, and so the first one, we're gonna start with 5,000 RMB. We're trying to find out how much he'll have. So the future value equals 5,000 times one plus, the percentage is 2.5 over 100. The K, because initially it's just compounded annually, then the K is one, so it's just gonna be 100 down on the bottom, to the N power, and it says we're gonna do it for five years. And again, the K is one, so five times one is still five. Go ahead, punch that into your calculator, beep, 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 and hopefully you get 5,657.04 RMB. All right. Um, and that's after the first five years. So now that much, he's gonna be able to put into a new account, right? So this much is now going to be our present value. So we're gonna go 5,657.04 times one plus the rate for the next three years is still 2.5, but now what does it say? It says it's going to be compounding monthly. 
So the money that we have now that gets moved into the new account is compounded monthly, which means that K is 12. And so this will be three years times K, which is 12. And that should then allow us to have our future value, our final value, and go ahead and work that through. Beep, 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 beep. And hopefully you get about 6,097.16 RMB. And so we got the answer. Going through two different kinds of compounding. One, just a normal everyday compounding annually. And the other where we have a compounding monthly, but still the 2.5% annual. Okay. So hopefully that's pretty straightforward. Um, this is not a super easy question because it did have the switch where we had to put into a new account, but overall, you know, fairly easy to work with. Okay. Uh, I would like to, uh, talk about one thing real quick. I'm going to, I'm going to post a, another video that talks about how to, uh, use your calculator on this because there's another way you can use your calculator in, in the way that I've, I've shown here and uh, we can kind of work through and, and just kind of put the numbers in like that. There's also on your calculator a financial application, okay? It's called the financial, uh, either the financial app or the financial solver. Um, and, and you can look it up. Like I say, I'll, I'll post a video for you. If you're interested, uh, go ahead and check it out. With this formula, with the FV, PV, I, I don't know how necessary that financial solver is, but it is kind of neat, okay? Now, when you do the financial solver, I'll, I'll show you how it would work for the first part here, all right? Um, on You just go into apps, and then you go down to financial, and then push enter. Um, it comes up with a list of various things. It has like an N, it has an I percent, it has a PV, a PMT for payments. Uh, it has a uh, FV. Some of these you'll you'll recognize and you're comfortable with. Uh, PPY, um, and then a CPY, and then uh, that's it. And so what each of these things are, just so that you have an idea, N is still the number of years. Okay, I is the interest. Interest, I can spell that, I promise. Uh, PV is still present value, how much we have now. Okay, payment is if you're making extra payments as you go. Uh, like if every year you're going to add in a certain amount of money or you're putting more money in or you're taking money out. Uh, we're not going to have to worry about that uh, in, in SL, so payments are zero. FV is, of course, the future value. Uh, PPY is how many payments you're making per year. So if we do make payments, how many of those are we going to make per year? That's uh, uh, Sorry, it's, it's number of periods per year. Um, you don't really have to worry about that because we're dealing with years, so just leave it as one. And then CPY is the number of compounding periods, right? So that's the same thing as your K, right? If we do 12 months, then we're going to change that to 12, okay? Everything else, though, can stay the same, okay? So if I were to put in the first question here, then I would put in the number of years being 5, the percent interest being 2.5, I would put in the present value, which initially was 5,000. Now, this is a little bit different because I'm actually going to put in negative 5,000. The reason is because I am losing $5,000 right now, right? I am paying that. That's going out. So it's a negative amount, okay? Um, I'm not doing any payments. The future value, that's what I'm looking for. So you actually just leave it blank. And then you go on to the PPY, which is one, and the CPY, which for the first situation up here, there was only one compounding per year. So I put in a one. Then when I am ready, I put the cursor right here, and then I push enter. Okay, And then it'll automatically solve for the future value. The nice thing about this is you can fill in all of these except for one. Uh, it, it doesn't matter which one you leave blank. When you're done, if you go to that and then push enter, it will solve for that variable, okay? And I'll show you an example of that in the next one. 
Um, but I wanted to make sure you like, again, like I say, you don't absolutely have to be able to do this because we got a formula to work with, but you may find that you like it and that it's easier to be able to just kind of punch things in and say enter and then it solves it for you. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I'll, I'll show you another one of those here in just a second on the, I'm not going to do it for every single one because yeah, I don't, I don't really, I don't really want to. <laughs> All right, so let's go on. We got another question here. Uh, Chloe becomes a semi-pro WNBA player and makes 80,000 USD in a year, uh, her first year playing. She puts it in a bank with 3% per annum that compounds quarterly. And so the, the question is then, okay, how much will she have after six years and how long will it take her money to double? All right, so let's go ahead and see if we can set that up. Okay, so first we'll go just using the formula, right? We've got the future value equals the present value times 1 plus R over 100K times NK. Now you'll notice that every single time I do this, at least the first time in the question, I'm writing the formula down, okay? Now this is not because I don't know the formula. I know the formula. In fact, I have used this formula probably more years than you are. You have been alive. Okay. Now that makes me sound really old. I shouldn't have said that. But um, the the point is is that I know this formula. Yet I still write it down. You should write down the formula before you start throwing stupid numbers in there. Yes, numbers are stupid. Deal with it. Get over it. All right. Write down the formula first. And then go ahead and put the numbers in. Man, my, my daughters would get mad at me. We're not supposed to say stupid in our house. All right, moving along. Uh, let's go ahead and solve this problem. All right, so she makes 80000 the first year. That's what she's putting in the bank. So we go future value equals 80000 That's how much I put in. 1 plus 3% per annum. So it'll be 3% over 100 now it does say compounds quarterly, so I'm gonna put in four, because that means it's happening four times a year. And uh, it does say six years times, again, four for the K. And you go ahead and work that out. I'll go ahead and work it out. Beep, 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 beep. Ta-da! You should have about 95,713 and eight cents. Notice that you gain, she gained $15,000 in six years just by putting it in there. All right, so that's a significant amount of money now, right? We're not talking about 15 bucks anymore like that very first question. This is a significant difference. This is a lot of money that's, that's being, being added in. All right, um, okay, let's look at the second question, okay? Uh, how long will it take her money to double? So this is a little bit different because this time I don't have the number of years. I'm solving for something else, right? So uh, let's go ahead and go back to the same formula, this future value equals present value formula. This time I know the future value, right? I want the money to double. So I'll put 16, sorry, not 16, 160,000. That's going to be equal to 80,000 because that's my, my present value times... 1 plus, the rate is still 3% over 100. It's still compounding quarterly. But the only difference is this time I don't have N, right? And you can set it up this way, and then you can N solve it, and you can N solve for N. <laughs> and once you N solve for N, hopefully you get that N is equal to 23.5. One nine, okay. Now I I'm gonna argue with the book here, right? Because the textbook says it would take 23 years for the money to double. I have to disagree with that because after 23 years, you haven't had the final compounding and it hasn't doubled yet. Okay, I'm gonna say because it's happening quarterly, it is gonna take 23 years. But remember, you're compounding quarterly, so quarterly is every three months. So after 23.25, that's a quarter of a year, after that quarter of a year, I'm going to have surpassed the 23.19, which means I'm going to be at that point where I've doubled the money. So I'm going to say 23 years and three months because that's a quarter of a year. All right. I encourage you to pay attention to those details as well. I believe that Ivy will. I cannot imagine in an applications course, 
I be being okay with you saying 23 years because after 23 years, you can punch it in. Go ahead, put in 23 for N and see what happens. It's not gonna be 160,000. It's gonna be less than that. It won't have doubled yet, okay? If you put in the extra three months, the 23.25, then it will be to a point where it's worked, okay? Um, I, I do wanna take just a second to talk about this second question. Uh, with respect to the calculator, right? Because you have that financial app. Okay, again, I'm, I, I don't have my calculator here, but I'm pretty sure you just push application and then you scroll down to financial and push enter. Or maybe it's finance, I don't remember, but something like that. Um, and, and when you, you'll get those things that look like this. Bloop, there it is. Um, so... For N, we don't know what N is. So you can leave that blank. If there's a number there, don't worry about it. Honestly, it doesn't matter. For the I, that's the interest, so we'll put 3%. For the present value, right, that's what she starts with. We'll put in, remember, negative 80,000 because she's paying. She's putting that into the bank. So we'll put in negative 80,000. For the payment, uh, we're not doing extra payments. She's just putting it there and letting it sit. The future value, we want to be 160. Okay. Uh, the, the periods per year, just one, one year per year. And then the compoundings, it is quarterly. So we'll put in a four there. And then you just take the cursor up here to the end and you push enter. And it should show up with a 23.19 there. It should just give you the answer. All right. So like I say, there's two ways to do it. You can do it using the formula, which is given to you in the packet. This formula is in the packet. Go check for it. Make sure you know where it is that you can find it. Or you can use the financial application on your calculator because you'll have your calculator too. And so you should be able to find it that way. If you ever have issues with one way or the other, then try the other one to see if, if there's something that maybe you did wrong in the first place. Okay. So um, I think that's all I got in this video for you. Um, I'm, I'm racking my brain to think of if there's anything else, but I really can't think of anything else that I, I feel we, we should have. Oh, I actually, I do. I do. Um, I want you to try something for me. Um, I want you instead of 80,000, put some other number here just real quick. I want you to try this in your calculator. Try any other number. Okay. It doesn't matter what number it is. You could choose one if you want. Okay. Not zero. Okay. Zero doesn't work, but any other number I want you to put there. And then I want you to double it, whatever number you put here, double it and put that here. And then solve for n. I want you to see what you come up with. And I paused there. I know that wasn't enough time for you to work through it, but hopefully um, you will actually go through it um, and, and try it out because you will get the same exact number. It doesn't matter how much money you put in there because it's a geometric sequence and you're in increasing by the same percentage every time. The amount of time it will take you to go up 100% is exactly the same for any number because you're adding the same percentage every time. You're not adding the same value every time. You're adding the same percentage every time and that percentage will add up to 100% at the same rate regardless of what your starting number was. So you could put any number. Anytime you have something like this where it says, how long will it take this to double? You can just put in any number there and then double it for your final value and it should work out, like I say, with the exception of zero because zero is ugly, all right? Actually, zero is beautiful, but it is ugly. It's one of those things. We have a complicated relationship, zero and I. Anyway, all right, that's it for today. Um, I hope that those videos are helpful and that you're able to finish up the, the work that's, that's associated with that. Thanks for watching, guys. See you later.